Hi, my name is Consada, and today the video is going to be called, I'm pretty sure, Forgiveness Brings Healing to You. I kind of want to emphasize that you. So, um, I'm kind of on this roll right now of trying to do everything, teach everything that I can to keep people out of hell. <laughs> I know. And again, I do it with no condemnation. The stories that I tell are a lot of them are about me. Okay, so putting it out there or somebody and experiences that I've heard or seen. Um, so I want to put it out there. Anybody, if you recognize yourself in these stories, I am not condemning you. I tell you what, I. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt because every story that I use, I've probably pretty much done it myself or worse. So can I put that out there so nobody gets mad at me or offended? It's just that there's testimonies that could help other people by the mistakes we've made. Because I know so many of the mistakes that I've made. I was a good Christian. I mean, I thought I was and I, I was serving God, loving God, helping people, doing all that kind of stuff. Thought I had a good heart. But I'll tell you what, you know, sometimes the enemy uh, takes advantage of us and we make mistakes and then we regret it. And you have to also understand too, whether I was talking about somebody or even another person um, from the past or something, it's like, we have to give people the benefit of the doubt that these people, that's why I don't I never name names because people grow and change. You know, what I do this year, I hope I'm better next year. What I've done a few years ago, I would probably never do again, but at the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. We grow, we learn, we change. Praise the Lord we do, that we don't stay the same. You know, I've said this before, it's like the Lord loves us too much to leave us the way we are. You know what I mean? That's why it's so important to get in that secret place with the Lord. Get in that quiet time every day in the Bible, alone with the Lord, where you can talk to Him, you can pray, you can cry out to Him, you can cry, literally. You know, God help me and teach me and show me the way. And I love that scripture. It says, uh, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God will show you the way. And He'll even show you in your life what areas you know this is not good here you need to grow in this area as you're reading the word of god you're like oh wow you get convicted that's a good thing i love to be convicted because i don't want to stay the same i don't want to be in sin and then get to where god says when i see him before him and he and you know there's that scripture in the bible that says lord you know i cast out demons in your name and I healed the sick and I fed the poor and he says depart from me for I never knew you and it's like I don't want that to happen and I don't want it to happen to you and one of the things a big thing this will keep you out of heaven okay is unforgiveness now the reason I'm gonna be so hard on it is because I've been there Oh my gosh, and I'll tell you what, I was even thinking about something the other day, and can I tell you something? I'm, I'm still kind of wondering about this myself, because, you know, this person's name came up, and um, I was done wrong by this person, and it's like I've been done wrong by a lot of people, haven't we all? Come on now, we have, um, and you can forgive some, I mean, we're supposed to forgive them all. But it's like, how come when that person's name comes up, it still bothers me? Well, I know I've asked the Lord to forgive me or forgive them for what they did to me. And I've asked the Lord to help me forgive them. And you think you have and you went through all the motions and you said it and confessed it and believed you were, you forgave them. How many times do we do this? But then, you know, it's like you can all, you can kind of tell and I wonder, is that just the devil lying to me saying, you know, you really haven't forgiven them? Because I'm going to tell you something as a Christian. 
One thing we do not want to do is live in unforgiveness with anybody. We know that is eternal damnation for us, even though they did it. And, you know, our whole heart as a born again Christian, born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ is, I want to go to heaven. I want to live with my Father God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ in heaven. You know, someday. That's our goal. That's what we're living for, you know, is to get there someday. I mean, that's not, we, we do want to go there. Of course, we want to get people saved and, you know, be a blessing here on earth to other people because that's why we're here to get as many people up there with us as possible, not to just live for ourselves. People want to w wonder, what is my purpose? What is my plan? Um, get as many people saved as possible. <laughs> there you go. Start there. <laughs> oh, good start. Um, and in that, trust me, you'll find out what you're supposed to do. <laughs> because when I have the heart of doing that, you will be probably a person who spends a lot of time with the Lord in worship, in prayer, and fasting, and in the Word. Praying in the spirit, which is praying in tongues. Um, but anyway, um, so I thought about that. This is something I'm really seeking the God, seeking God on, because you know, this is why I want to be. I, I, I want to tell you this, and I know that my videos, people have said, you know, you're really hard on people about things in so many words. And the reason I am is. I, I'm like, better be safe than sorry. Don't want to get in front of hell and think you did all this and I thought I forgave them and I did this and I've been doing good things here and good things there for you, Lord. I'm working for you, Lord. And giving and all this kind of stuff. And then you don't get to go in. You know? It is not about works, people. So, and one forgiveness is a definite no. You're not going in. Now, we're talking eternity here. This is why I'm so hard. This is not a hundred years, even a billion years, or a zillion. I think that's a word, zillion. It's forever. You'll never get out. Would you want something that happened to you that somebody else did to you? That was bad. I'm going to tell you something. I ain't con I'm not. Let me tell you something right now. I'm not condoning. Please know this the hurt and pain that somebody caused you. You're, there could be terrible abuse. It could be uh, terrible. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just use that word. I'm talking serious abuse. Uh, taking advantage of um, things happen to you that should have never happened to a person. Okay? Those things happen. And for you, I pray for you. And I'm going to pray at the end because... That would be so hard. So no, number one, it was horrible what you went through. But what I want to show you today is unforgiveness will keep you in that prison that you're you're in. Maybe that person put you in there. It wasn't your fault. You were an innocent victim. So they put you in a prison. You know, you have shame, you have guilt, you have regret. You got all this stuff that wasn't even your fault, maybe. If I'm talking to somebody because of this kind of stuff. And then now you're struggling with unforgiveness. And believe it or not, people, it's hard. This is hard to say, but as hard as it was, what you went through, I couldn't even imagine. Unforgiveness is worse. Because what they did to you won't keep you out of heaven. Might put them in hell if they don't repent. You know what I'm saying? But that's not for us to... That's between them and God, you know, and I'm even going to show you in here. And I know this is going to be hard, how we have to actually pray for him. I know, I know. I can't tell you how many people have said, I'm not, for, I'm not praying for them, you know, and you little do you know that you praying for them and forgiving them actually brings the healing that you need. That's how powerful it is. And that's why the enemy doesn't want you to pray for him because it's that very prayer that love that you show when you pray for an enemy brings so much power into your life that it's what actually heals you. Yeah. Because what has happened is you need healed from what happened to you. But then as time goes on, depending on how long it's been, if you stay in unforgiveness, you're going to find out in your life there's going to be a lot of other problems that come up. 
you know, it could be mental, a lot of it is mental, physical, could just be things happening in your life, you know, things just don't go right anymore, just can't seem to get ahead, I can't seem to ever make enough, or, you know, I'm just stagnant, you know, it, it could, it, it could affect every or any area of your life, you don't know. You know, if you got unforgiveness, you basically got the devil walking with you, you know, in your life. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Are you talking about an open door to the enemy? Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're right in there with them because not only do you have the pain of the past or present, whatever that's going on right now, you actually, it's an open door for him to pretty much attack you in any way and anywhere he wants so you're gonna need healing from all this stuff that's going on caused believe it or not by unforgiveness so unforgiveness or forgiveness let's say it this way forgiveness will not only heal you from that painful thing that happened to you but it'll also give you that right to go boldly before the throne room of grace to obtain help and mercy in your times of need for all this other stuff that that unforgiveness has wrecked in your life or harmed in your life, including you and your body and your mind and relationships or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you're in unforgiveness. You're walking with the devil. He's right there. It's an open door because unforgiveness is a sin. You know, um, and I'm going to show you, because you know, I'm going to give you some scriptures here in the Word of God. And, and it's, again, I'm not condemning you. There's so many stories I could tell you, and I it really just makes me want to cry because, oh, what I was going to say, I don't want to get all teary on here, um, but you could think you forgave someone, but then... When their name comes up or somebody mentions them and even in a good light you know and it bothers you something inside you're just like hmm like you're not maybe angry anymore you're not really like hateful or anything toward them wouldn't want any ill will toward them it's just that something bothers you and it's not like they're a bad person or anything. It's just somehow the thought of what happened comes back. And I, this is my thing right now. And I'll be honest. And when I get the conclusion for this, I'll let you know. Because um, it just happened to me the other day too. And that, trust me, the last thing a Christian wants is to be in any kind of unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness will stop things in your life. You don't want that. You always want to make sure you're in forgiveness. So my thing is, is, is the enemy just bringing that back up because he wants to get you fussy about it again? Or did you really forgive him? And that's just one of those thoughts you've got to cast down and say, double, you're a liar. I already forgave him. You know, I, I really don't have any bad feelings toward that person anymore. You know what I mean? So I always say my kind of my motto is better be safe than sorry if something comes up. And let's pretend it's just the enemy lying to you again. Better be safe than sorry and say, Lord, you know, and this is what I'm going to pray for you. Because like I said, I'd rather I'm always going to be a little bit more on the the, the harder side about things. Being stricter, I guess you could say. But I'd rather be too strict than not strict enough and then you stumble in that area and think oh okay well I guess it, it, you know I, I can do that a little or I don't have to do that so much or whatever I'm gonna be really strict and then you go before the Lord and deal with it yourself so what I would say and we're gonna pray this is Lord if those things that are still coming back to me that I thought I forgave is there any unforgiveness in my heart? Because if there is, help me. I've tried. Because sometimes it's not an easy thing to do. But we want it. And the thing is, is you want to do it. You do. Now, some people don't. <laughs> That's, that we got to just start working on that, okay? Because forgiveness is a choice. You know, you're not going to probably ever feel like forgiving. 
but you do it as an act of your will and you choose to forgive because why God said to it's not about how you feel do it because God said to be obedient to the Word of God and he'll bless you so let me give you a couple scriptures and I wrote this down and I was gonna do this I have is uh, some series on healing some teachings on healing and it's God's power to heal and I thought you know this is such a part of it because I want to do a little bit of a health series too and you know you can eat all the best foods in the world the highest quality the best organic but if you're in unforgiveness it might be better to just eat a rotten rotten peach or pear <laughs> you know it might be healthier than having the most perfectly formed organic if you're in unforgiveness because unforgiveness just taints you it's like a it, it taints you it might look good on the outside but inside if there's unforgiveness it's it's going to eat at you and it'd be worse than eating you know what i'm saying if you're going to compare a perfectly formed pear to a little one that's not organic and it's a little bit rotten which one would you choose do you know what i'm saying it's it's more of a a heart issue as far as if you're going to pick the two if you if that makes any sense to you um and so i had on here god's power to heal through forgiveness so you'd be surprised how much healing will come to your life let's say you can't sleep you can't you know always having problems with your body in some way or something you know because you're thinking well I'm not getting healed so I got to take all this medicine or something or this or that let me just tell you say one hindrance to getting your prayers answered I'm I'm not saying um, you can't pray please don't ever stop praying you know but just kind of keep yourself up on something ask the Lord say Lord is there anything in my life that would stop my prayers from being answered is there something that I'm harboring or that I got going on in inside am I in strife with somebody am I cheating somebody am I lying am I not being faithful am I not you know show me Lord because we always want to keep a check right don't you check your refrigerator and get the rotten stuff out <laughs> I'm not silly but you know what I'm saying we want to sometimes things are there for a while we forget they're there but I, I think just keeping that check up with the Lord, Lord, show me, is there anything in my life that's hindering my prayers? Because I'm going to tell you something, if you're not in any kind of sin that you know of, or the Lord hasn't revealed anything to you, there is no reason why you can't go before the Lord. Come boldly to this room of grace to obtain help and mercy in your time of need. There's no reason why your prayers wouldn't get answered. Why? You know? I can't see why I, I know one thing that definitely will hinder is sin and I would have to say unforgiveness is sin yeah because how many times I'm gonna show you these scriptures where God says you have to forgive you have to you know it's so if you're not doing it anything in disobedience to the word is sin you know what I'm saying just like I used to tell my kids obedience brings blessing but disobedience will bring trouble. Or you could say the inability to get your prayers answered. Now, as soon as you repent, remember, you're as clean and white as snow. The blood of Jesus Christ, according to 1 John 1, 9, cleanses you. And you can go boldly to that throne room of grace and obtain that help and mercy that you need in your time of need, whatever it is. And you'll have confidence in your prayers, too. Um sometimes I think people go to plan B and plan C or this person or that person or this method other than God to be healed because they don't think God will heal them or that he'll listen to them oh my goodness will he listen to you he's waiting even if you're in a whole bunch of mess and sin and everything just go before him and say God help me I'm sorry please I want to do better help me he will he wants to answer your prayers trust me he loves you he said, if I send you my son, I'd freely give you all things. He wants to bless you. Okay, so it says, I wrote this down. Walk in the light of my love. From This is from the Lord. Um, 
Um, but it's kind of guys, goes with what I just said, kind of the light of his love. If you think about it, when the light of God, which is his word, shines, it exposes the darkness, right? That's cool. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So I am in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. And it says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Basically, and then I have here Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. If we don't forgive, God cannot forgive us. And if he can't forgive us, guess what? If something happens, you're not going to heaven. It ain't going to happen. You've got to walk in this perpetual forgiveness, no matter what anybody does. I know it's hard sometimes, and that's why I've had to go to God sometimes month after month after month after month. God, help me. God, help me. It's still bothering me. It still hurts. Please help me, God. I'm, I'm struggling. I want to. I want to. I want to. Help me to forgive this person. It hurts so bad. You know, keep going after the Lord, and he will help you. Um... It says, do not judge. This is, oh, I'm sorry. This is Luke chapter 6, verse, thir verse 37. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Do not judge and you will not be judged. So we're not judging other people here. It's not really what we're talking about. I think sometimes we won't forgive people because we're judging them. Maybe that could go in there as far as um, you shouldn't have done that or you were wrong and, you know, judgment and condemnation and all that kind of stuff is not ours the bible says vengeance belongs to the lord we we don't have that right to pay back people the bible says overcome evil because that was what happened to you overcome evil with good yeah <laughs> yeah okay um and it says do not condemn and you will not be condemned so don't condemn people Okay, even if they've done wrong. Because sometimes, you know what I've found out? Other people in your life will get in unforgiveness because of what somebody did to you. They'll start hating that person and getting in strife with them and unforgiveness. Because they love you and they feel like they're being loyal to you if they don't like them either. And they'll cause you and encourage you to do things against that person because they were mean. You don't need to forgive them. Look what they did to you. And you don't need to let them be with that person. I mean, just, just trust me. Your own family and friends will do that. And they think that they're being loyal to you. Because then they're in a, a bad situation because they're like caught in the middle. Who do they defend who especially that happens a lot with divorce you know kids are like in the middle like you'll see some go want to one and one some to the other and it's like they don't know what to do bless their hearts and you know that's my divorce series you could go and watch those it's called Christian divorce um, I have videos I made and and it's just what a horrible situation to put them in oh my gosh that that's such a regret I have it, it, it's the most horrific thing nobody ever really knows people don't really tell people what's really gonna happen when you get divorced and I, I wish this would be more more before in churches than after you know divorce recovery well how about divorce stay married type thing um, I mean it, don't get a divorce you know what i'm saying like try to make sure marriages are staying strong and healthy before that would ever happen and if they're on the verge of it do everything you can to keep them you know together you know what i'm saying because the aftermath oh my gosh it's like they don't really talk about it too much because people don't want to get into your business and i'll tell you what if you really love somebody get in their business if you can see something a problem a situation that you know is going to cause them harm later on in their life or their kids or somebody tell them don't we were so afraid that people aren't going to like us we're so afraid of getting in somebody's business because oh they're going to get mad at me if i say anything oh i better just stay out of it no get in it help people that's one of the ways you do they might not like you or get upset with you because trust me there's many times i haven't said things to people because i'm like oh i know they're just gonna get mad at me i know they're just gonna shun me and i don't want them out of my life because then they're not going to want to be around me or talk to me and 
but I don't know my personality is kind of like I'm pretty vocal and I look at it this way it's like I'd rather tell him the truth and lose him as a friend or I don't want to say lose him as a family member but you got to take that chance what would the Lord do tell the truth my goodness you know so I'm gonna tell you something if you really love him you'll tell him the truth because you know it's gonna hurt him way more later or their kids he's gonna hurt them way more later so um I'm gonna okay I'm gonna say this real fast because I can't let this go too too late but I saw this on the internet when I was looking up different you know script scripture I was looking up scriptures for forgiveness you know instead of looking in the uh, like in a concordance and now we look it up on the Bible I couldn't believe I saw this and I only wrote it down because underneath it I wrote garbage so know what I'm saying right now is garbage and I believe it's of the new age you know trying to live a life it should go under my series I have another another series called a world without God how people try to live and fix their problems without God okay listen to this oh my goodness it says somebody asked a question can you not forgive someone and still move on and then when it said according to and then there's this person's name never heard of this person I don't know who she is she could be a she could be a, a, a witch for all I know I don't know if she is I'm not saying she is but she could be some kind of a, a somebody okay let's just say but this is totally against the Word of God it says it is completely possible to move on and heal from trauma without forgiving the perpetrator right there red flag all over it without forgiving that's totally unscriptural in fact forcing yourself to forgive or pretending to forgive when you really haven't can actually be counterproductive to healing mm, mm, so bad I'm sorry don't listen to garbage this, this, this just like broke my heart that's the only reason I put it in there don't listen to this if anybody goes against the Word of God they're wrong done period end go to the Word of God I try to tell people everything you need is in the Word of God all kind of healing help deliverance whatever you need salvation trust me for every situation just start reading your Bible okay don't go to these people and and I know social media can be used for good because we're using it right now but it can also be used for bad too you know and you're always gonna have both sides get in the Word of God so you can learn how to discern who's right and who's wrong well let me just tell you right now if they go against the Word of God they're wrong so this is wrong because it's clearly against the Word of God but how would you know it's against the Word of God unless you knew your Bible about forgiveness this is how people get caught up into stuff you know what I'm saying total garbage Ephesians let me read what the Bible says here Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 through 32 says get rid of all bitterness get rid of all bitterness rage anger harsh words and slander as well as all types of evil behavior instead be kind to each other tender-hearted forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you do you see what I'm saying that's the Word of God that's why I'm doing these videos so that maybe you didn't know what the Bible said now you got to learn to read it for yourself but I'm just putting it out there for somebody for a quick fix for somebody who didn't know it you got to get out of forgiveness as soon as possible okay if you want your life to change you want your life to get better okay um okay okay listen to this this is kind of like a commentary okay it just says why is it so important this is not often understood is the Lord commands us to forgive others so that we are listen to this so that we are no longer under the power and injury of the injustice I was talking about this at the beginning that it really brings healing to you 
You don't have to live in that pain of the past anymore of what somebody did to you or didn't do to you or for you, you know? Um, anyway, so it says here, in other words, receiving and giving forgiveness is a, is a main way the Lord heals you and brings wholeness to your life. And it's not only, I know people get warped things. Sometimes they think they deserved what happened to them or you want to receive, they, they feel ashamed and condemned and guilty and stuff like that. And you have to receive God's forgiveness too yourself if let's say I'm talking to the person that did it ask God to forgive you for whatever you did to whatever person it was and he will forgive you you know um Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 it says but I tell you listen to this are you ready for this God I pray you know I'm gonna pray right now father I pray right now for anybody that's been so hurt, maybe again and again, more than once, and they can't seem to get out of unforgiveness. Maybe you're hearing it for the first time. I'm praying for you. Lord, help them to forgive. You know, it's an act of your will. Choose to do it, to be obedient to the Lord, and because you, you, you're not going to feel like it. And what will happen is, and you'll see in the future, as you continue to pray for this person, you know, God forgive them. It's kind of like when Jesus was on the cross and he they, they killed him, you know? But he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. I am not condoning anything. Nope, not coming for me. Uh-uh, nope. I'm not walked in your shoes. I don't know how bad it was. And I know some have probably been terrible, terrible, horrible bad. But what I'm saying is, it's that power of forgiveness that's going to bring healing to you because of what someone did. And God said, they obviously didn't know what they were doing. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't have done it, right? Okay, it's exactly what Jesus said. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Who would kill the Son of God, right? Okay, that's what we're saying for this person. It's not a admittance that what they did was okay, or it's, it's shoved under the rug. It's, um, condo you're condoning it. No, because you think you are. No, you're not. And neither is anybody else that forgives them that's in the family or friends if they forgive them. You want them to forgive them. You don't want to cause other people to be angry at somebody. Oh my gosh, you talk about you're in unforgiveness. Now you're getting everybody else to be in unforgiveness because you're talking about it. And you're talking about that person. The Bible says, do not cause discord among the brethren. Do not talk about people. If you have a mentor, a very godly person, who's going to tell you what the Word of God says about what happened to you and how forgiveness will bring healing to you, that's one thing. Okay, but don't be out there talking to people just to sympathize with you because you're causing discord among the brethren. That's another sin. You do not want to dirty somebody's name. You don't want to do it. Don't talk about people. That is never a good thing. And, um, yeah, so anyway, let me go. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, but I tell you, love your enemies. Now, I know you don't love them. Of course, how could you love somebody that did that to you? But you can love them with the love of the Lord, and that's what we're going to pray for, that God puts his love in your heart. You know, you can't love them in your own natural way, you know, in time. If you keep praying for them, pray in the Spirit. That's another thing, another great way to pray for them. Watch the video, Christian Tongues. you got to pray in the Spirit for them, okay? Or you can pray in your words and say, Father, forgive them, just like Jesus did, for they know not what they're doing. People, when they do stuff, nutsy, crazy stuff, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they need help, no doubt. So they need prayers. And, you know, we always want to be Christians and care about people and help people. What's one of the best ways you can help people? Pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to judge and condemn? Well, you know what? What if it was the other way around? And you were the one doing it. There's a lot of people that do things that they shouldn't do, even as Christians. So we all need prayer. Um, okay, it says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Persecute you. Abandon you. 
take advantage of you, hurt you, lie about you, put any, lots of words in there. Verse 45, so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. So this is going to solidify your place <laughs> with God as a child if you forgive because your father forgives and we imitate our father. Everything he did, just like on the cross, he did as an example for us to follow. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is when Stephen was being stoned, a very righteous man, and he was being stoned, killed. Yeah. And thank God nobody's killed you. But I've heard of stories of people that have had people kill their own family members, and they were able to forgive them. That is the love of God. And then, you know, that love is so powerful because pa walking in love, you always maintain higher ground. There's no more powerful for force on this earth than love because remember, the Bible says God is love. So no matter what anybody's done to you, no matter what's going on out there, if you walk in love, you've got all of heaven on your side and you've God on your side. And he will move heaven and earth to get to you and get you what you need or get the help that you need, you know, to change your life, to change your situation. Yeah, love is the most powerful force in the world. And that's why the enemy does not want you to forget what happened to you. That's why he doesn't want you to forgive. Because as long as you're in unforgiveness, his power is working in your life. And we all know what he does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If he had his way, he'd kill you. So if maybe he doesn't physically kill you, he'll try. All kinds of things will happen in your body, in your mind. He'll steal from you, your family, your money, your livelihood. He'll destroy, he'll destroy you. He'll destroy anything and everything your business, your mind. <laughs> I mean, he'll destroy everything and anything, literally try to kill you in every way that he can and take everything he can from you. You see what I'm saying? But if you have the power of God operating in your life, which is forgiveness, you have God on your side. And oh my goodness, that is a power <laughs> that's unlike anything that we could even imagine so yeah so anyway it says here so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous if you love those who love you what reward will you get even tax collectors do that. And if you're kind only to your own people, what are you doing more than others? Even pagans do that. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And I think you're thinking, well, nobody's perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. Well, you know what? We're supposed to imitate him, right? So you can do it. You're never going to be like perfect, but it's sure a good goal to, to strive for you know and I believe when you walk in the love of God that's pretty perfect <laughs> and I mean walking in I don't I mean we're never the only Jesus is perfect you know what I'm saying but what I'm saying here is we're supposed to be striving to be like our Heavenly Father and you know it's really neat even um, when I was talking about Steve in the story I didn't finish it you know he said father you know forget he did like what Jesus did this is what we're supposed to do, okay? There's another example in the Bible. He said, Father, forgive them. Do not hold this sin against them. Can you say that? Do not even hold that against them for what they're doing. And then Stephen must have understood that there are times when people are not in their right mind and they don't know what they're doing. And what if that person was you? Because there's times in your life, and I know I've done things in my life where I was like, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. Have you ever always done everything right and said everything right? No. 
We've all made mistakes, and I'm going to tell you something. If you give somebody mercy, you're going to get mercy when you need it. If you give somebody the benefit of the doubt when you need it, they're going to give it to you. And I want to tell you something. If you forgive people, other people are going to forgive you when you do dumb and stupid things. Because we've all done dumb and stupid things. And even bad things. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm going to kind of end it with that right here. Um, I want to pray <laughs> for people that are struggling in this. Because again, no matter what that person has done to you, it's not worth hell. They may have hurt you bad, but it's not worth hell. Because the thing is, they may have already repented and asked God to forgive them. And here you're in unforgiveness and you're going to end up in hell because of what somebody else did to you. Don't let that happen, people. Don't let that happen. That's what the enemy does. You think, oh, that's kind of strange and weird. Well, I'm sorry. God says to forgive, so you have that ability. God's not going to ask you to do something you cannot do. He won't ask you to do that. He knows you. You can do it, but we need his help. Start praying for that other person. Whoever hurt you, and watch what happens. Eventually... Believe it or not, you could love them again I, I, with the God kind of love. You know what I'm saying? You can truly do it. It might take some time because I'll tell you what, you know, it doesn't always happen instantly. But we're going to pray right now that, you know, do it as an act of your will because God said. And if you continue to pray for that person, you're going to see the feelings will come back again. You know, there is an agape love. It's, that's God's love toward us. It's, it's called agape love. And it's unconditional love. I love them no matter what. And I think this is what happens a lot of times in marriages, why people get a divorce. That's why God said he allowed it, because of the hardness of your heart. But do you really want to stand before God and say, well, yeah, that happened because I had a hard heart. Well, a hard heart is unforgiveness, because if you could forgive the person you'd be okay again, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that we'll, we'll talk about that one in the divorce videos, but you know what I'm saying. If you forgive someone, then everything's fine again. I mean, you might, the enemy's going to keep bringing it back and bringing it back because he wants you to be in strife because he knows how much it's going to hurt you. You're not going to hurt that other person because most of the times they don't even know they did it. So many years go by, you know, they don't even remember they did anything. So we want to release them, forgive them, ask God to forgive them, ask God to help you to forgive them, you know. Let's pray that right now, okay? If you're struggling in any kind of unforgiveness, um, let's ask the Lord right now if you want to pray with me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, if I have any unforgiveness in my heart toward anybody, bring it up to me. Show me. And then I'm asking that you help me to forgive them. Help me to love with your love, your agape love. Help me to forgive with your forgiveness. Put your love and forgiveness in my heart. I want to see them and feel about them the way you do. Help me. Just as Stephen said, do not hold what they did against them, Lord. Forgive them. And help me to forgive them too. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. So, we did. We asked. So you will receive. <laughs> It'll happen. So, but you have to be obedient to the word of God. You know, pray for them. You know, we do pray for them. Everybody that's ever heard us, Lord, we pray for them. We ask you bless them. Forgive them for what they did to me. I want you to bless them and don't hold it against them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And also, I want to pray right now for anybody that's not born again. Okay, let's do Acts chapter 16, verse 31. 30 and 31, it says, Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then verse 31 says, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> So let's pray that right now if you want to. Pray with me. Say, Father God, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Lord God, I, I'm sorry. 
I want to, I want to turn from my life that I've messed up and done so many things wrong. I want you to wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ and cleanse me. Help me to forgive, Lord God, myself and other people. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. I'm calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be saved. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be your child. Jesus, you died for me. I want to live for you. Help me to live for you. Teach me. Show me how. I'm giving you my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you sincerely meant that, get in and you can rejoice. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says all of heaven rejoices when one sinner comes home. Um, so stay in the Word of God. Read your Bible every day. Talk to the Lord. Pray. Watch the video, Christian um, Tongues. You can start praying in the Spirit. You want to pray for your enemies. Um, God is going to help you with that and uh, watch and see your life turn around. You're going to feel better about being able to pray, more confident, and there shouldn't be anything separating you from God. The Bible says sin separates you from God and unforgiveness is sin. So that's really awesome too. So um, anyway, I think that's it for now. I just pray right now over you that you walk in the love, the agape love. I pray it for you that you can now walk in the agape love of the Lord Jesus Christ and love people with his love. And you can forgive people with his forgiveness because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. So I just want to say thank you for watching. God bless you. Until next time.